This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Carbonite. Welcome back to another episode of Rumor Roundup. This is the show where I take a rumor from here, take a rumor from there, and make a rumor sandwich for you. Up this week, we're going to talk about the iPhone 5S supposedly offering not only NFC, but fingerprint scanning. PlayStation 4 and X Generation Xbox games might be getting a bit more expensive. Sprint is allegedly going to offer a pure touchscreen BlackBerry in 2013. It's just not the Z10. And we're going to talk about Motorola's rumored X phone getting a new name and some new specs. This is Rumor Roundup. I'm your host, John Rettinger. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's begin with the iPhone 5S rumor. We are hearing that it's going to offer NFC and a fingerprint scanner. KGI Securities analyst Ming-Chi Kuo said last week that Apple's iPhone 5S will pack a fingerprint scanner directly under the home button for added security. And now a fresh rumor from China is totally backing up that claim. I'm a bit dubious though about the home button having a fingerprint scanner. I can imagine that's going to cause crazy software delays or what if you're wearing gloves or what if your fingers are greasy, you're dirty or all kinds of other things. I can see it being something you enable or not enable. Um, maybe just have some sort of face tracking might be a good way too. But uh, we should see this possibly relatively soon. Uh, China Times backing up those claims saying that Apple will deploy fingerprint scanner technology provided by Authentech, a company that provides module sensors and other hardware security associated with fingerprint scanning. The news outlet also claims that Apple's going to add NFC support for mobile wallet capabilities. Unfortunately, mobile wallets haven't been too successful in the United States so far. Google Wallet relied on NFC, but Sprint was the only carrier to support it. Also, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon are working on a totally separate initiative called ISIS that is currently still in testing in just a few US markets. Still though, NFC could be pretty useful for sharing data between iOS devices like photos, videos, and music. And it's technology that's already widely used by Android and Windows Phone 8 smartphones, so it'd be kind of cool to see something standardized, although it's not as quick as you might believe. Uh, NFC really isn't standardized yet though across all devices, so it would be interesting to see if Apple comes in with straight NFC or maybe some weird type of Apple proprietary technology. The rumors though are just that. Hopefully we'll see in a few months when Apple unveils the iPhone 5S. What do you guys think? Fingerprint scanner? You want that? Or do you want NFC? What's more important to you? What do you most want the iPhone 5S to have? For me, I want a redesigned iOS. They can take their fingerprint scanner, they can take their NFC and keep it. I just want a fresh new OS. Love to hear your thoughts. Leave your comments down below. All right, so let's go from phones on over to gaming. Rumor has it that the PlayStation 4 and next Xbox 360 console games are going to cost 70 smackaroos. Industry analyst Michael Patchter held a presentation at the recent South by Southwest gaming conference. Geoff Keighley, who was reporting there for GameTrailers.com, was live tweeting the lecture. Keighley reports that Pachter put out a prediction regarding the price of games for next generation. Here's what Keighley's tweet was. He said, at South by Southwest panel, at Michael Pachter says PS4 and next Xbox games likely will cost $70, about $10 more in the current gen. So granted, before we get all worried, this is pure conjecture on Practor's part. I'm not totally convinced though it's a legitimate stance either. $59.99 or about $60 bucks seems to be the sweet spot for selling games. It's worked well for this generation, and I don't see either Sony or Microsoft making the first move to raise the prices. If $60 bucks was not working, it would have changed over the course of the past 7 plus years of the console life cycle. It didn't. Clearly. It's worth mentioning though, prediction does hold true, Nintendo will once again offer the cheapest option for gaming software. The Wii's catalog generally sold for about 50 bucks, and the Wii U's is typically listing at around $60. So we'll definitely see, I'm hoping that $60 is already $10 more in generation before that. Uh, it would seem like that probably is a sweet spot. You don't want to gouge the customers. Uh, the more people that buy, obviously the more you're going to make. To print a disc, it doesn't cost that much money. Uh, so hopefully they'll sell more at 60 bucks than they would at $70. We'll keep our game prices at the same level. But more rumors that I wanna know aside from gaming prices is what is the next Xbox going to have? Hopefully we're only a few weeks away uh, from finding out all that information. All right, so let's jump back to phones. Sprint will allegedly offer a pure touchscreen BlackBerry in 2013 just not the Z10 that's already out, which is kind of weird. Sprint already said it's not going to sell the Z10 smartphone and instead offer the full QWERTY keyboard Q10 later this year, which I'm super excited about. Uh, the Q10 looks like an awesome phone, but no one's had a chance to really play with it or touch it. Uh, we had a chance to see it at BlackBerry World, but they wouldn't let us use the screen or turn it on, so we really don't know how it's going to perform. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean, though, that Sprint's not going to provide a BlackBerry that offers a full screen touchscreen, however. 
All things D learned on Monday that Sprint will offer another device still un unannounced by BlackBerry later this year with a full touchscreen and without a QWERTY keyboard. It's possible the phone's launch will serve as an exclusive because we can't imagine why they would simply hold off on the Z10, uh, which is already a pretty decent phone. Uh, but that's just our own speculation. Uh, the phone will allegedly launch in the second half of the year, although all things D could provide any insight whatsoever as to what sort of spec it's going off and how it will differentiate from the already on the market Z10. Our guest, though, will probably hear a bit more during BlackBerry Live sometime in May. So if you're on Sprint and you want some full screen action, you're going to have to wait a few months. We step back from the rumors for a minute to thank our friends and sponsors at Carbonite. Carbonite Business Online Backup is automatic backup for all computers, servers, external hard drives at your home office or a small business. Just set it up once and Carbonite will protect your computer files so that you can stay focused on running your business. No hardware is required. For a low flat annual fee, Carbonite keeps your business protected no matter how many computers you have or where they're located. Start your free trial, no credit card required, at Carbonite.com and enter offer code TECHNO today and you'll get two free months if you decide to buy. Again, it's Carbonite.com, offer code TECHNO for two free months. Now back to the rumors. All right, so let's stick with phones and talk about the Motorola X Superphone is now reportedly being dubbed the Motorola NXT, or just next, I guess. Motorola and Google are allegedly working on a secret project together to develop the Motorola X, a next-generation Superphone that will pack apparently features unlike any we've ever seen in any smartphone before and specifically will target Apple and Samsung's efforts. If I had a nickel for every time somebody said, well, I have a smartphone unlike anything you've ever seen, I would be a very, very rich man. Uh, this X device, however, is now being reportedly called the NXT, probably pronounced just simply Next. Apparently, we can expect a 4.7 inch display, which we've seen, full HD resolution, which we've seen, 16 megapixel camera, we've seen pretty close, 5 megapixel front facing camera, so that's something new, uh, Nvidia's new quad core Tegra 4i processor, that's new, and the latest version of Android, which you're expecting to be unveiled during Google's annual developers conference coming up in May. We've seen most of the hardware in other phones before, save for the 5 megapixel front facing camera and Tegra T4i processor. So we're guessing their real groundbreaking work is going to be done on the software services side of things. There's no surprise there, especially as smartphone makers begin to rely more and more on features instead of raw hardware specs. Uh, the phone will be the first that's built entirely by Google and Motorola, but we're not quite sure yet if this will be the next Nexus phone or if it'll be an entirely separate device from Motorola altogether. I'm thinking though, we're probably looking at the next Nexus and the first phone we're going to see launch with Kilan Pi. Uh, so what do you guys think? You want to wait for the X phone? Do you want to pick up the Galaxy S4, the HTC One, or you're just sick of waiting for phones? You just want to freaking buy something? Leave your comments down below. So thank you guys for watching another episode of Rumor Roundup. I'm your host, John Renge. I hope you enjoyed. We are rounding up rumors for you every week, so be sure to check back and check out technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech news. I'll see you guys next video.